Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Rogers State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with Cindy Decker, Executive Director of Tulsa Educare, and Cindy has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Cindy, for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Educare, children, talk about the mission of Educare and how that unfolds in this community. Right, so Educare was established because of a board very concerned about the inequities that exist in our world. So a baby born in a family with very low income, that baby's prediction for life success is not as good as those born to higher income. And we really want the American dream to exist where there's lots of social mobility. So uh, the board thought really hard, how, what do we think is the best way to make a difference and to eliminate these inequities? And the research shows that early childhood education is essential. So they um, decided to first off open up the first Tulsa Educare School. So this is a group of citizens who come together and say, not only from their heart of, of what chi children deserve, but also for a healthy Tulsa, for a healthy community. How do you ensure that these most rare of resources are children? How do we ensure that they are going to be positioned to be great Tulsa citizens? Absolutely. And um, we already know that in kindergarten, children who come from lower incomes are doing much worse than children from higher incomes. And so you know we have to start early or you're otherwise already starting with a problem that exists. So, so what date was the organization established? The first Tulsa Educare School was started in 2006. Interestingly, it was started under another organization called CAP Tulsa. So Tulsa Educare became its own entity in 2010. So 2006, and how did it start? What was the first class like? What was the first cohort of staff like? Right. Let me first tell you that Educare is part of a larger network. So the first Educare in our nation was started in 2000 in Chicago. So. Um, when we started Tulsa Educare, we already had a model built through this Educare Learning Network from which to build. And in a totally different environment, that's the thing, right? You have people here in Tulsa who are looking at what is happening nationwide, and they hit upon this model, and then they import the model into Tulsa, but they also adjust it as they go along. Absolutely. We like to be evidence-based or research-based and find best practices elsewhere and then bring them here. The other thing that I think is very interesting is that you're, you're agnostic, if I can use that word, in terms of um, who you partner with, in terms of whether they are religiously affiliated, not religiously affiliated. Your, your real intent here is to meet the community where it is. And whatever uh, organization, whatever partner uh, is providing that kind of service, you're there to be a resource. Absolutely. We are open to working with any organization that is serving the children and families who we want to serve. So we do have some limits, I want to say. So if you are in a higher income part of Tulsa and you're serving higher income kids, we likely will not choose to partner with you just because we know you have the means and that, and that would not um, make that difference of inequities that we're really um, focused on. Also, the focus of your mission is to try and heal society by providing these educational uh, services to children in need. And you are also funding through shared resources, government resources, and also through donated dollars. You're trying to invest those dollars, just like any investor, where the investment will have impact and not where it won't. Exactly. I. I am an economist by training, so actually I talk a lot about return on investment, which is what you were just talking about. So we want to make sure our dollars end up translating into benefits to children and families that exceed the cost of those dollars. How does an economist get into social services? So um, in my life, I always knew I wanted to make a difference, and my strongest skill set is analyzing data. So um, I ended up kind of following along with what I was good at, which was analyzing data, and I ended up getting a PhD in economics. Well. Um, in economics, I was focused on labor e economics, so the labor market for lower income um, people. 
then I ended up, if you're working on the labor market for lower income people, you'll pretty quickly get into education. And um, how can we get improve the education that that our adults Well, the receive. data also sh uh, starts to show patterns. You start to see shifts in, in income and behaviors and employability and so on. So you start to get to that education piece fairly quickly if you are a data person. Exactly. So then I started working in education. I was at the Government Accountability Office in Washington, D.C. Um, loved that job. Bore two children out in Washington, D.C. and said, I really want my kids to know my parents who live in Tulsa, so I'm going to move back to Tulsa. So you came back now with a rarefied skill set as an economist <laughs> coming out of Washington, D.C. How do you find a job in the Tulsa market? Um, it is not the center of, of the federal government, certainly. Exactly. And I, was, I only um, wrote one letter looking for a job, and that was to a man named Stephen Dow, who was the executive director of CAP Tulsa. CAP Tulsa ran a public policy arm, so that was right up my alley. And he operated this early childhood education program. So he took a risk and hired me. <laughs> now, what's really interesting is uh, coming here with your skill set, as you came in and you began to uh, work first as, as a staff member and now as the chief executive of this organization. How does data inform your decisions? How do you ensure that that investment has a return? How do you balance between hard and soft metrics? Because we are, after all, talking about children. Every child is different, and they're not numbers. Right. I am always ebbing and flowing and, of course, learning in that world, but I began focused on child assessment data and how are children doing and realizing, you know, certain age groups or certain domains, math or literacy or language, you know, we needed to focus more in one specific area and the data would tell me that. Um, so then that led to what do we need to do differently in order to make that change? And I found through, you know, my 10 years at CAP Tulsa that I started getting more interested in how to make change <laughs> to actually make the data move. I got tired of analyzing the data because I saw that the data wasn't always moving. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to become more of a data-driven leader is how I describe myself now. Um, so I began with Tulsa Educare as their chief executive in January. So I've only been there 10 months so far. And um, I'm still trying to figure out how do I still have my love of quantitative metrics, but also all the emotional flow and culture. Um, how do I weave these together to really make an organization that makes that impact on data I want, but is also happy and healthy. And it's grappling with these issues that you're describing, the human piece and the data piece. The other issue is, of course, salaries. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, an issue in this country when it comes to teachers and that we do not pay adequately. And then we complain mm -hmm. about every dollar that is spent for education. Um, but it doesn't really matter if, if it comes through tax dollars, private donations, or whatever. We need to invest in our kids, and we need to invest in a way that levels the playing field and recognizes that all kids deserve a certain amount of base support that is functional, not dysfunctional support, but that actually can allow these kids to build a future for themselves. Absolutely. So pay in Oklahoma for teachers broadly, even K through 12, had um, been one of the very worst in the nation. We've made some improvements on that lately. As a representative in early childhood ed, we are very um, lucky or blessed in Tulsa in that our lead teachers are paid equivalently to the Tulsa public school system. So while it is still low, it, that's very rare in early childhood to still match the public right. school system. Now, I will have to say the pay for our teaching assistants who don't have bachelor degrees, it, it is definitely a problem. Um, and we need to do more to advocate to pay them more. In terms of, of the future, as you build new schools um, and, and you expand in that way, will you be um, evolving your non-school-based programs similarly so that you can have a bigger footprint that is not tied to physical infrastructure? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We, we will be um, developing out next to our fourth school 
Adjoined to, is it a, adjoined to it is an 8,000 square foot space called the Early Learning Collaborative. And that space is to house the staff that can do the outreach to the rest of our child care partnerships and to our faith-based partnerships and community partnerships and really um, create a less costly approach so that we can reach more. Um, maybe say they get $5,000 in a year um, to come get some pr free professional development or free software systems and the like. But it's going to be really uh, nice to have this space called the Early Learning Collaborative just dedicated to our outreach. And Tulsa and this, this whole area has a very rich uh, group of experiential education institutions. Um, are, are, are these kinds of experiential learning uh, organizations part and parcel of, of your thinking in terms of who, how to collaborate? Right. Uh, sometimes, sometimes not. Since our children are so young, field trips don't always make right. sense. However, um, the Gathering Place is a wonderful new park, and we do co market their book reading events mm -hmm. with special people who come in town. So we do some of that. I'd say when you mentioned educational kind of partners, we partner a lot with Tulsa Community College and the University of Oklahoma. And how does that partner partnership unfold? What, what kind of, how does it manifest? Right. They are training our teachers, our soon-to-be teachers. So at Tulsa Community College, they even have an internship that um, students can apply to and come work at Tulsa Educare while they're students. Community colleges are such a resource. They're, they're so wonderful for municipalities, in particular for, for states, in that they provide such a bang for the buck. They, they, they provide rapidly deployed skills, and that kind of partnership is really finding purchase at, at Educare. Absolutely. I mean, one thing about Tulsa that I hope that you're seeing while you're here, that while we are somewhat of a larger city with lots and lots going on, it's also small enough that we all know each other and there's lots of nodes of connection. And so, you know, I can call Tulsa Community College, I can call University of Oklahoma people, Oklahoma State University people, and very easily people want to help one another. And all you have to do is say it's for children and, and then <laughs> people are there. You're right, yes. Cindy Decker, thank you so much for sharing the work of Tulsa Educare. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing on behalf of the children of Tulsa, and thank you so much for your insights. It was a pleasure to be here, and I really appreciate you allowing us nonprofits to come share more. Oh, the honor is mine. Thank you. <laughs>